Our story begins when I found out that we were going to have our second baby. It was about three months along and I was very excited. So I went home and I shared the great news with my husband. Um, he was super excited to find out that we were gonna have our second baby. And I think that he secretly wished for a boy, but I knew that he was absolutely thrilled and excited if he had a second healthy baby. At the time uh, when they told me it was gonna be a girl, I looked at the technician and I said, can you check again? Are you sure it's not a boy? And they said, no. So I thought, well, I'm happy. Let's, let's go with it. <laughs> By June, they noticed that my blood pressure was getting high. Around July 1st, they noticed that I had extreme fluid retention. My blood pressure was off the charts uh, and the protein outputs were just too high. So they sent me to the hospital. And that's where the fun began because I got a phone call saying that my wife was going to the hospital and she would be admitted for possible preeclampsia. I knew that something um, could happen, um, that there was a possibility that they would need to take the baby early, but we were told that every day that the baby could stay uh, in utero gave her an extra chance at life. I remember one afternoon uh, when the doctors rushed in and they had just looked at the results. Um, the OBGYN and the fetal maternal specialist looked at them together and they decided that at that point an emergency uh, C-section was needed. So the baby was in extreme distress and my body was shutting down to preserve the pregnancy. What actually happened was is that the placenta stopped working. So the placenta was not providing the nourishment and oxygen that the baby needed to survive and the baby was in distress. So they were, they were very concerned uh, with my uh, organs shutting down and they were concerned that you know, not only would the baby make it, but they were concerned about my life as well. And all I kept thinking about was, um, you know, what would happen to my husband and my four-year-old daughter if I didn't make it? And what would Eric do if I didn't make it? And he was left behind with a newborn, a micro preemie and a little girl to raise on his own, living so far away from our family. And the minute that I get uh, to the hospital, I'm walking through the hallway, and there's, there's probably, I'm probably exaggerating, but 40, 50 people crammed inside the room all the way out. And so I'm waiting through the, the doctors and the assistants and nurses and trying to find Dina, and I was like, wow, what's going on? And at that time, the doctor, uh, lady doctor pulled me to the side in the hallway and pretty much explained to me in a couple words or less, this had to happen now. When Eric came into the room, I was telling him to tell them not to take the baby. <laughs> um, and he was, very calm and he was my solid rock and he said that he wouldn't allow anything to happen that would hurt me or the baby and that he was going to make the best decisions for us so we would have the best outcome and i think that they had taken eric aside and let him know that this may be one of the last few times that I might be able to talk to my family. So, <laughs> I remember talking to my dad on the phone before I went into the OR. And uh, my father just said that he loved me. And I told him that I loved him and that we were gonna be okay and to pray for us. Eddie is born, and then I heard this murmur, uh, a little something that was sort of aggravated or mad, 
And then at the time, uh, they raise her up and there she is. But I was expecting to see, you know, this child, but instead I saw this child. Eric looked at her and I kind of turned my head away because I didn't want to look at her because I was afraid that if I looked at her, I wouldn't ever be able to see her again alive. And Eric said, Dina, you need to look at her. You need to, you need to see her with your own eyes. And when I looked at her, that was it. I was smitten. I was attached. I was 100% all in to Team Addison making it. Early on, I remember going back to work the next day because I was in the middle of a uh, vehicle launch. I remember walking through the uh, plant and uh, blacked out. The next thing I know, I'm getting uh, put into an ambulance, taken to Sparrow Hospital. <laughs> so he's like, well, I'm hearing that you have a daughter in the NICU. So evidently I had been talking about Addie and Dina and stuff. And he said, well, everything's going to be okay. And I says, well, okay, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> and he says, uh, well, you're looking at a 24-week-old uh, preemie. And at that time, um, just the chills came over me. It was like the answer from above. It was a very, very bumpy ride um, for the first two months that Addison was in the NICU for the first eight weeks of her life. Uh, she was unable to stabilize her uh, heart rate and her oxygen levels. There were a couple of phone calls that we got from the NICU that said that Addison was in distress and that we needed to come and we needed to say our goodbyes. And that was very stressful and very painful. As a dad, uh, there's emotions, a lot of questions. I do remember visiting the website. And there, I did find some sections that they described uh, the condition of preeclampsia. And I'm thinking, where was this? Here it is, it's right there. So I started reading through all the information and uh, actually it had probably more information than most websites had. And to this day, I, I, I won't forget using it as a resource. The only thing that I really knew uh, March of Dimes for was walkathons and helping babies. I didn't understand all the research that they actually uh, you know, undertook all the information that's available on the website, it's all free. The dollars that are given to the March of Dimes mean saving another life and making another family whole. And that's the most important gift that you could ever give a mom or a dad.